Hello, hello. How are you, Wafa? Hi. I'm doing fine, thank you. Good. How are you? I'm great. And uh, um, tell me about your day, your first day of... Wait, yeah, tell me about your day. <laughs> um, it was good. Um, um, I just came from my auntie's house. Oh. And I go walking there, and I come walking. But when I came walking, it was very cold for me. It was very cold? Yeah. No, a bit, a bit cold. A bit cold, very yeah. Cold. Oh, not very cold, yeah. <laughs> In my language, I say that's cool. <laughs> it's very cool, because I bet it's not very cold. Um, by the way, uh, instead of uh, come walking, I would say uh, go for a walk. I go for a walk with my auntie. So that's the action. You can go for a walk, a stroll, uh, for fun. You can go for a walk. Common, common activity. A very fun activity. Something I do every day. Especially because I have a dog. So I go for lots of walks. Nice. And Krzysztof is back. Hello, Krzysztof. Hello again. Hello again. Uh, ooh, we have... We have an advanced class now. Yeah, 400. 400, can we, can we handle it? Yes. Ah, so yesterday I taught a class. Yeah, <laughs> 100, 200. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a lot of, yeah, yeah. yeah it is when I have a lot of advanced classes. But yesterday, one of my classes was about Nelson Mandela, uh, president of South Africa. Excuse me, President of South Africa, and this is a class about South African food. So now we're going to always talk about. We're just going to talk about this cuisine of South Africa. So that'll be exciting to learn about what kind of food they eat in that country. And South Africa is a country. It's not just Southern Africa. It's actually its own country. So. Make sure we we know that. So, um, uh, past perfect will be our grammar skill. That's a good advanced skill, and um, and then we'll talk about South Africa. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, for speaking of food, I was eating my favorite dish for breakfast today, which is that Vietnamese beef noodle soup. My friend bought me some yesterday. I didn't get a chance to eat it until this morning. But that is my favorite. I think that's probably my favorite food. It's called pho. Excellent soup. And Servette has joined us. Hello, Servette. Yes, hello. How are hello, you? Sir. I am fine. Uh, how about you? How about you all? Krzysztof, Krzysztof, Marhaba, Wafa. Hello. <laughs> Am I saying just correctly or not? Uh, it is Czesz. Uh, Czesz. Yeah. Czesz. Right? Yes. Like C H N. Oh, nice. Czesz. Oh. Good. So, yeah, that was really slug. Um, what's new with you, Servet? What's new? As much my aunt was here, uh, and she left in the evening. Your aunt? Yes, my aunt. Oh, really? That's funny, because uh, Wafa was hanging out with her aunt, too. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's hanging out with their aunt today. <laughs> in the most international ant day. Yes, it's an international ant day, yes. yes. Ant I heard Yes. I heard that there are two different pronunciations for aunt and ant. 
Which one? There are, and I, I just use both. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I use both. There's aunt and there's aunt. They're both correct. Uh, my aunt Mary, my aunt Mary. I say aunt more. Jeez. Maybe because I don't know why, but because it looks more like it's spelled. I don't know why a lot of Americans say aunt because it's a u n t. So that's weird that would be aunt. But, but a lot sounds, of most people say aunt. Aunt sounds more British to me. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it does. It is. Yeah, but uh, I've always said. I mo I normally say aunt. Aunt Betty. Yes. I mean, you can say either one. They're both correct. It's like often and often. It's your choice. Mm. I see. Yeah. Or n neither and neither. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Let's call the whole thing off. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Let's call the whole thing off. How was your so, day? My day. You want us? Uh, playing your piano anymore? Uh, I'm not. Are I'm you? not playing my piano anymore. Yes, at the same class. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. I did. Uh, last week I taught a class about Peter Gabriel's So album, and I played. A, I did a performance of uh, the song In Your Eyes. Uh, you can. I have proof. You can go to the. You can find it on YouTube, and I played piano. Okay. And uh, I played guitar a couple days ago when I talked about Elvis. I played a, a Elvis on guitar. So I so sometimes, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play any piano because this is a food class. Right? It's not gonna, I can sing a song about a South African food. I was having some South African food. It was pretty tasty. No, no food songs today. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, um, have you ever uh, have you ever tried cooking something that went totally wrong? Everyone should have a story about this. A lot. A lot. <laughs> uh, okay, so pick. Pick the most interesting story and tell us all about it. Um, it's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I want to hear about it. We can all laugh at each other so, because we're all going to tell the same story. I'm going to tell you a story. That that went you know all you know we all have to tell a story, so it happens to everybody. Um, like when I make the kimchi. First oh. time I, I put uh, a whole cup from Peppa. <laughs> wow, so it was too spicy to eat. Too spicy, yes. So. Oh my gosh! So nobody could eat it. That's that's, uh, um. that's some powerful. So you had to throw it away. Yeah. That's too bad. At least uh, I guess the ingredients of kimchi probably are very expensive. So, but that's how you learn uh, trial and error, right? It's like science. You keep trying and, and making mistakes. You have to make mistakes in order to learn something. If you guys didn't make mistakes in these English classes, then you wouldn't be learning any English. If you don't make mistakes in the kitchen, then you're not going to make amazingly delicious food. So now I bet your kimchi tastes really good because you've learned, you're learning, you're teaching yourself how to make perfect kimchi. If you don't make mistakes, you're not going to get better. So uh, now I bet you make really good kimchi. You're not gonna make that mistake again. <laughs> uh, Krzysztof, what about you? Story about food. Any kitchen horror stories? Yeah, you ever tried making something and it went totally wrong? Mm, you know, I'm like a dog. I eat everything. <laughs> 
Uh, uh, well, that's good. That's that's uh, that's handy. Everything I yeah. prepare <laughs> yeah, is that's good. delicious. That's <laughs> but I <laughs> would oh, say wow. that uh, over people can say the same <laughs> about <laughs> what I prefer. But for uh, me, is perfect. <laughs> well, that's that's very useful. You don't waste any food then. No, I try always uh, to buy, uh, you know, um, prepared amount of food, so I know, uh, you know, uh, it. I will not waste this food. Mm -hmm. That's good. Oh, like package. I uh, watch uh, how long it's durable. Some product, and I uh, predict. Okay, well, then I will eat uh, there. So mm -hmm. I plan when I eat something, and uh, how durable are product in my refrigerate. Yeah, uh, durable. I use durable more for um, how strong something is, um, like a another kind of object. So, like... Um, mm, because product uh, are no, perishable? Yeah, yeah, per yeah, perishable for food. Durable would be like, how durable is my phone? And how durable is my car? How durable are my clothing? So usually, like, um, yeah, man-made items are durable. It's a very durable hammer, you know, a very durable uh, chair. But food, yeah, per how perishable it is. It's like, uh, how fast will it go bad? How fast mm -hmm. will it be spoiled? So how experience it? Right. Ex yeah, how will it ex uh, expire? When will it expire? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Experiment to, say, date? Oh, yeah, what uh, to say? Expiration. And a lot of times they'll print an expiration date on there. It says, well, okay, it expiration. Uh, might expire April 2014. Please use by April 2014. And usually you can use it a little later. The best thing is to open up and smell it or look at it. If there's some strange colors or things growing in there, things moving around, then you probably don't want to eat it. But Or if it smells terrible... Then you should probably throw it away. But the expiration date is also important. But uh, I try to choose products uh, that they don't have long time expiration date because, oh. like, you know, I like something fresh because you can buy some milk um, will last for, I don't know, one year. <laughs> and second one in, uh, in bottle. Uh, it's only for three days like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't like uh, this uh, conservant and uh, food. Yeah, they put a lot of... Uh, uh, chemical. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, chemicals to... Pre yeah, preserv yeah, preservatives. Preservatives, exactly. Preserv in food to make it last a long time. But those preservatives aren't always very healthy for you. So it's good to buy fresh food. Not only you know, they add uh, uh, these uh, chemicals, but sometimes they uh, boil uh, with uh, temperature. They kill these bacteria. Oh, how much nice. So uh, homogenized. I think that's called. I don't know how to spell it. Though. It's homogenized. There it is. Homogenize. Homogenize. If you they homogenize milk and you homogenize something, that's when you. Yeah, that's that's the process. I think it's invented yeah. by a French French Frenchman, right? Yeah. So oh, I prefer this. Uh, maybe have. Uh, oh, it's pasteurized. Pasteurized. Yes. Um, Pasteurize. I don't know. <laughs> pasteurize. <laughs> yes, pasteurize. Pasteurize. Yeah, yeah. Louis Pasteur, um, the French guy. That's not homogenized. Yeah. So I don't uh, use this product. I choose uh, maybe uh, is uh, not long uh, 
uh, expiration date, but I choose them. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So you have lots of rules. That's good. Uh, Koro, hello, welcome back. Hello. <laughs> yes. Hello. Uh, I was asking everyone, um, have you ever tried cooking something that went totally wrong? Oh yes, a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> everyone did. So uh, pick, pick, pick the funniest. Once and tell us about it. <laughs> yes, I am from the Basque country and we eat normally a lot of uh, fish. Mm -hmm. And I was living seven years alone in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, once I tried to cook a fish for a lot of people. <laughs> and it wasn't impossible. It was impossible because the fish was mm, from Spain but it was frozen mm -hmm. and <laughs> it was impossible. I tried to cook something nice for a lot of people like in the Basque country with a fish, a fresh fish Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, it was a chaos. It was a, uh, a totally chaos. <laughs> <laughs> it worked very well, huh? It was a my. Who is the name to say? It, it was my political family or my uh, oh, family. You're in in -laws. In -laws. Okay, in love. My in family in love. <laughs> hey, my in laws are here. My in laws are in town. You gotta cook a nice meal. Then you cook them. <laughs> in -laws. That means your spouse's family is your in laws. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Do they do they do they still like you? <laughs> <laughs> do they forgive you? <laughs> Sorry? Do they do they forgive you? Forgive you. I, I, I can understand you Oh forgive? Um, if you make oh, I forgot, forgotten. Yes, 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 yes. I forgot all the. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive someone. It's like if you do something bad and then they're mad at you. Yeah. Then later yes. on, they forgive you. It's like okay, I forgive you. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes. They forgive. Yes. Um, that's good. What about you, Servet? Generally, I I don't make complicated things. Mm -hmm. I only once wanted to like, uh, cook some meat. I had never cooked meat, so it was frozen, and I didn't have time and microwave to nook it. Mm -hmm. I directly put it in hot water, and I thought maybe it would thaw out in in the cooker, and it would. Uh, Cook, it would be cooked fine, but mm -hmm. in the end, for a long time, it stayed there. And the, on the outside, it got red, and maybe it was about to be. Uh, but on, on the inside, it wasn't cooked enough. It wasn't uh, soft and the way it was supposed to be. But ah. still, it wasn't so bad. It, the pan, uh, the pan bird, I had to clean it for a long time. Yeah, that can be hard to clean. Yeah, it burns. You have the, if you have meat or something that sticks to the pan, it burns. Burnt meat on a pan can be very hard to clean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've I uh, I like to experiment a lot with cooking. I love to do really crazy things. Like, what do I have in the kitchen? I have this and I have this. I'll just put it together and make some weird thing. Sometimes it turns <laughs> out delicious. Sometimes it's amazing. I'm like, wow, why didn't I think of that before? It's great. And sometimes it's like disgusting. Sometimes it's terrible. <laughs> like, what? Sometimes it's so weird. Sometimes it's so weird that I think it's hilarious. I'm eating it and I start laughing because it's so. <laughs> what did I? Like the food is actually funny to me. Like this food is funny because why would you mix these things together? It's <laughs> and so I've laughed at my own creations sometimes. I'm like, this is awful. 
sometimes I have to make my grip by eating my own food and I'm, and I'm like sorry I was I was try I was experimenting sorry but he's a good sport he's he'll try anything I make um, yeah so you have to make it easy yeah uh, I like you know uh, distinctive but uh, easy product like uh, yeah. uh, something in their own sauce. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, not too many <laughs> seasoning. <laughs> ah, so keep it simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do not use uh, salt, so I have never over salt my food. <laughs> you don't use any salt? Any. Really? Uh huh. Wow. Is it with no salt? Oh, it's very interesting. Yeah. Is that for health reasons too? Or just you don't like salt? Mm. It's for health reason too, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I don't need, uh, you know, if you don't use salt uh, for uh, example for two weeks, uh, you do not need, uh, you adjust to this taste of the food uh, without salt. Wow, I love salt, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Salt makes food taste good, especially. Uh, yeah, but uh, this is not good for you. So too blood much pressure uh, and kidney. So. Right, too much salt is very bad for you. But um, your body does need salt. It does need. It, but yeah, but uh, you know, it's not you don't eat salt because uh, if you buy some product, you everywhere see. Uh, salt. So right, salt is natural. Um, you add additional, it's like additional salt. Right. Yeah, you have to know how much salt you eat. Because, yeah, you, of course, food, a lot of food has salt in it already. And so that's usually maybe enough. But So I don't salt everything. But some things, for me, I like to salt, you know. Like I like salty popcorn, salty french fries, salty meat. I like my meat to be salty, you know, things like that. But then, like, Vegetables, eh, maybe be salty, but I don't need my vegetables to salt. Fruits, you don't have to salt fruits. Uh, so I, like I prefer to use herbs or mm -hmm. uh, caraway or something like this. Yeah, sure. To change uh, taste of dish, but not salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let's let's do a really quick talk about past perfect tense before we talk about South African food. Um, where how do we use past perfect tense? Servet, what uh, is it? Structure is had plus past participle. Uh, when we use it is. When we have two events in the past, and we, and we want to show which one happened first. Okay, yeah, good. That's definitely one way to use uh, past perfect. So, for example... So, for example... <laughs> uh, let's say I talked to Kurzostov yesterday because I had I hadn't called him for three months. Oh, okay, that's a good sentence. It's it's very natural. That's the I could see somebody saying that in real life. Yeah, I I called Krzysztof yesterday because I hadn't talked to him in three months. That's a very natural American sounding sentence. Very good. That's good. And and it's a negative past participle. I mean negative past perfect. Right. Uh, good. Good. Um. So, uh, so we, we we've covered two things already. Um. What about past perfect continuous? So, Wafa, uh, Wafa, if past perfect is um, uh, I had eaten uh, South African food. Uh. Uh. Is if it's I had eaten. Then how can you how do you think you can make it into uh, past perfect continuous? What do we do to a verb to make it continuous?
we have an ing back. Mm -hmm. Right, we have ing to the verb. Now, this is an advanced topic, so it's going to be tricky, but uh, to make a past perfect sentence continuous, you do make the verb uh, ing, and then there's one other thing you need to add as well. Do you know what that is? Uh, what kind of a sentence you can make? B word. Huh? What, Krzysztof? Uh, word started with B. Ah, a word starting with B, yes. A word starting with a B, yes. Had been. Yes, exactly. So... How would you so how can you make a sentence then in past perfect continuous? Um I had been studying um for two years. Okay, I had been studying for two years. Right. That's a good phrase. Mm -hmm. And then usually you probably have something before it or after it. But that phrase that you just said is a very good example of past perfect continuous. Excellent job, very good. So I had been studying for two years uh, when I uh, decided to quit. <laughs> that's a really bad one. I don't like that. That's a bad example because I don't want you guys to quit studying. Um, but yeah, so good, good, good. That's past perfect. That's all we're talking about for now. Um, just making sure we know that one. Uh, so. Uh, any questions on past perfect tense before we talk about the food? More about food. No. Okay. Good. All right. South African recipes and ingredients here. I'm going to send you this link because they actually have links to different recipes. This is a, a recipe website with ideas for real South African cuisine. So, <clears throat> whether you're planning on visiting South Africa or just want to cook up something tasty at home, our iconic recipes and glossary of cooking terms will help demystify this fascinating cuisine. What? What is this word? Mm, well, well, mystific <laughs> and demystify. <laughs> yeah, mystific. Mystify. Well, yeah, think about what is mystery? What about that's yeah. spelled like mystery? What does mystery mean? But mystify is like fake. <laughs> um not like fake. It's more like uh confused. Um if you're mystified, you're you're really confused or perplexed, bewildered. Um, so it means confused. So mystery means like I don't, I you don't understand something. And if you're mystified, like confused. Yeah, exactly. Confused. So strange. what is de de mis like strange? Yeah. So a mystery is something strange, and mystified is to be confused. So demystify then. What if you add D to a word? What does that mean? Mm, opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes it the opposite. Yes. So make something easier to understand. That's a, I've never seen that word, but um, but I mean I don't. This is not a common word, but uh, it's obvious what it means just by looking at it. It's you can word. use that with the religion, like mystic. Yeah, well, mystic is uh, also the same root, but is it slightly? That's another different uh, definition. Uh, more about religion. Mystic is a person who, uh, someone who wants to become one with God. I guess something like that. I, usually, uh, as a absolutely is hidden. Yes. Um, no. Mystery. Yes, it's not. Uh, for everyone. Yeah, well, mystic and mystery are at the same root but have different definition. They're yeah. not the same. Yeah. So something is mystical or mystic, then it's about something something religious or spiritual or or even uh, supernatural. 
but mystery is something that is unknown. So they're similar. Anyway, let's talk about food. That's some interesting looking food. This is bobo thai. I don't know how to pronounce anything here because I don't know. I don't know, but uh, this is a custard topped meat casserole with yellow rice. Wow. As hosts of the 2010 FIFA World Cup, South Africa is getting a lot of attention these days, and its unique cuisine certainly deserves a share. The country's cooking reflects an astonishing mix of influences. The foundation of African ingredients, uh, recipes dating back to Dutch colonial rule, along with a smattering from the British, Portuguese, Germans, and other European powers, and uh, spicy touches added by the Southeast Asian and Indian laborers. While South Africa still works to overcome the challenges of its turbulent history, its diverse people have created a rich and vibrant cooking style that reflects their cultural melting pot. If you're planning a trip or just want to prepare a South African menu at home, here are recipes and key terms to know. Uh, if you have a turbulent history, well, what does that mean? Um, unstable. Tricky. <laughs> yeah, unstable. I like that word. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tricky. Very, not just tricky, but extremely difficult. Um, turbulence is like, like when you're on a plane and you it's. Have, uh, if you fly, you. If you fly when you fly, it's turbulent. Yeah, yeah. turbulence. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You don't want turbulence in a flight. It's very scary. You're jumping all over the place, and it's very scary. So you can have a, a country can have a turbulent time when everything is going every which way, and everything's very confusing and difficult. Okay, so here are some terms. A glossary is a list of of uh, vocabulary. So. We're going to learn some new words. I'm going to learn some new words, and you are too. I don't know these words either. These are all new for me because I don't know anything about this subject. This is not from anchovy. <laughs> oh, yes. It certainly yeah, I think so. I think you're right. <laughs> yes. No. It can be. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So what Marmite is to the British, so Pex Anchovet is to Peckish South Africans. A savory taste for slathering on a slab of well buttered toast. As the name suggests, Anchovet has a list of briny ingredients, including, of course, anchovies, that lives up to the eye catching motto printed on each 4.4 4 ounce jar. 91% fish. Actually, let's take a look at what this stuff looks like. <laughs> Oh, not showing me anything. I don't see anything there. Let's look it up then. It's fine. I'll do it myself. All right. Ah. And Joe is, yes. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> All right. So, answer that. Uh, Biltong, South Africa's national snack. Similar to beef jerky, although some gourmands like the best versions uh, to liken the best uh, versions to prosciutto, biltong is air cured beef, or sometimes ostrich or springbok. What the heck is springbok? Laced with roasted coriander and designed to be gnawed in front of the telly during cricket matches, either sliced or in chewy snapsticks. Wow. Interesting. So, uh, uh, what are they talking about here? There's a great, a very great verb here, nod. What mm -hmm. means? Like chewing with your mm -hmm. uh, teeth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ikoro, what were you going to say? What means uh, this? Yeah, that's what word. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like what Krzysztof says, is to chew with your teeth. Uh, okay. Really, how is uh, knowing uh, crunchy uh, or something? So yeah, kind of like if you gnaw on something like I, I'm gonna use this lobster crunch, again. Crunch, crunch. <laughs> oh, Lily! Uh, <laughs> you're gnawing on, gnawing on. Now you don't. You're not supposed to eat the outside of lobster. I'm just 
Sorry, Lily. I was just um, <laughs> sort of what noise. So. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, in front of the telly during cricket matches. <laughs> All right. So wait, look, I gotta see what this looks like. I want to look at a picture of this beef jerky type stuff. Uh huh. Yep. Interesting. It looks very good. Uh, no, what is no. this fish or meat? <laughs> what is this fish or meat? Meat. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Is what this part? meat or fish? I've it's meat. Teacher. What far did you say something? It's like no. dry meat. Yeah, exactly. Yes, Ugh. exactly. It's dry meat. It could be very good. No jerky. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, see, Wafa likes it. Yes, yeah. know you eat. Do you know it, Wafa? Uh, no, it's, I've eaten it before. Yeah, yeah, she's had it. We have it in Turkey as well, but it doesn't look exactly the same. Yeah, we have it in the United States. Here in Spain too, but... <laughs> 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 So, uh, bear Wars, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, oh yeah, Bear Wars. German settlers created this farmer sausage in the 1800s, served up with a, a goodly dollop of pop and sue, uh, corn polenta accompanied by an, an herby tomato sauce. Bear Wars, bear wars are now ubiquitous uh, at Backyard Breis when dried, these plump Coiled tubes of minced beef and pork spiked with coriander and cloves become drevors, a kind of Kalahari Slim Jim and the cylindrical cousin of Biltong. So it's a lot like the last thing we saw. German influence. Berevors. I don't know if that's how they pronounce it. Ugh. Alright. It's all weird and coiled. Up. I am trying to be vegetarian. <laughs> ah, sorry. This is not a vegetarian class, I guess. <laughs> How many Christoph. points for a vegetarian? <laughs> yeah, Christoph might like to try that. Man. Looks like a good sausage. Though. Okay, it looks delicious. Yeah, yeah it looks delicious. You should give up uh, being vegetarian, Cora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately... My classes uh, are omnivorous. My class, my classes are omnivorous. 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 So if you yes, are, yes. if you're an herbivore, then you're a vegetarian. If you're a carnivore, I am trying to be. Yeah, and if you're omnivorous, then you eat everything in the world. And these classes, we. I talk think about. all, but I am trying to eat um, less uh, meat. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Hmm. Continuing, Brai, uh, inspiring no end of rapture among all parts of South Africa's population. The cherished Brai, uh, Brai uh, is essentially an open-air, open-flame barbecue. Anything and everything is liable to be charred from berivores to lamb chops to lobster, hey, to the ever-popular snack. <laughs> mm -hmm. According to South African culinary expert Lannis Snyman, Wineland's briars feed their flames with vine stumps. Up in the free state, bry heads prefer to stoke up with corn cobs. That's a really hard, hard paragraph to read. But let's at least look at a picture. That's strange. All these words are new to me. I'm learning just as much as you guys are right now. Here we go. Here we go. Wow, that looks great. See, there's vegetables for Koro on the side. <laughs> Koro gets some. We get, and then we can have the meat in the middle. But Koro can have the vegetables. In the yes. Looks tasty, actually. I like those vegetables. I wouldn't eat those. Those look good. And here's, so they're showing the culture here. They, it's a cookout, like a barbecue. Oh, there they are. Mm -hmm. It's like a barbecue, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cooking, it's a cookout, cooking outdoors on a grill. Ooh, what's this? Really? Oh, wait, there's a... Oh, the tomato? Yeah, tomatoes and 
some yeah, kind of skewered vegetables there. Oh, what am I doing? What's happening? Let's try to view the image and it tried to download something. Never mind. Anyway, looks good. Bunny Chow. This beloved takeaway dish originated a century ago in the curry houses of Durban, a South African city that has the largest Indian population outside of the mother country. A quarter or half loaf of white bread is hollowed out to make a yeasty, chewy bowl, which is then filled with spicy chicken, lamb, or bean curry. See? All right, Koro, you can have the bean curry. That'll work for you. <laughs> this, portable, this portable and delicious concoction was invented by way of bypassing South Africa his race laws, which prohibited African patrons from eating inside Indian and Malay establishments. That's terrible. Terrible. So, quick vocabulary. What does concoction mean? Um, to prepare food. Uh, yes, to concoct is to prepare or something, but a, a, as a noun, a concoct. <laughs> uh, it is, uh, or you can say mixture. Uh -huh. A uh, mixture, a concoction. Made food. <laughs> yeah. So, I really want to see this. Mm -hmm. That looks delicious to me. I think that looks... I love <laughs> Indian food. Yeah, okay. Mm. Oh. Looks beautiful. Mm. Mm -hmm. huh. Wow, strange. Right. It's vegetarian food. Sometimes. I think. Sometimes. Sometimes. This one's ve this one looks might be vegetarian here. It looks um, very well. Oh, it looks nice. Mm. Well, this is why it's called bunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't Yeah, bunnies eat vegetables. Bunnies eat like carrots and stuff, so why are they eating this <laughs> meat and Anyway, Mrs. Ball's Chutney, not to be confused with the uh, Tangier Major Grays, Mrs. Ball's Chutney is South Africa's answer to ketchup. An addictively sweet and zesty concoction, hey, they use concoction again, engineered for dousing hamburgers or uh, as a down-home Anglo-style sambal. Uh, so that's a sauce. It's a sauce. Ooh, Petty Petty. I love Petty Petty. When Portuguese sailor... Just made port of call in what is now South Africa and Mozambique. They brought ashore a little uh, little chili peppers called bird's eye chili, or peri peri in Swahili. The name also came to refer to the piquant sauce made from these chilies, as well as to the Portuguese African method of cooking prawns, chicken, or anything else in this sauce. Nando's bottled version is a mainstay for those who don't want to make it scratch. Uh, what does that mean, mainstay? I don't know. Um, uh, mm -hmm. McDonald's is a mainstay in the United States. Coca-Cola is a mainstay. It's like something that it's never going to go away. It's going to stay forever. Uh, Omnipresent so. or something. So. Like what? Uh, sorry, say it again. Like Foundry. Foundry? Um, foundation? Yeah, like a foundation, yeah. Like a staple, mm. actually. You could say staple. How about staple? We've talked about that in food class before. Staple. Uh, and you need uh, always can find. So in a mainstay. Uh, won't go away. So like, uh, yeah, McDonald's is a mainstay. Unfortunately. Something constant. Yeah, constant, yeah. There is the piquant sauce. There it is. There it is, Nando's. That's, that's the hot pity mm. pity sauce. Yummy. Mm. I love it. Delicious. Oh, and then petty petty chicken is delicious. It's uh, they use lots of citrus. There's lemon and and hot sauce and oh, it's delicious. This sauce Sorry, is like it. Tabasco, for example. Yeah, kind of, kind of like Tabasco. Mm. It's maybe even more spicy than Tabasco. 
Okay. And Snek, uh, Snek, South Africans' rabid devotion to uh, Tearsight's Atun, better known as Snek, ensures that this bony, barracuda-like, oily fleshed fish, reputed to be quite fierce as sea, uh, quite fierce at sea, turns up in a variety of tasty guises, smoked, bride with apricot glaze mashed into a pate or braised in a rice dish called smorvis. The curious Afrikaans ex expression slot ma dud met in pop smek used to indicate surprise or dismay, translate as hit me dead with a soft snick. <laughs> mm -hmm. What the heck is snack? And how do I, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I'm just guessing. Whoa. Oh. Hit me dead with a soft snake. Yeah. So, that's a pretty big fish. Looks like pike. Mm -hmm. With teeth. With teeth, yes. Looks scary. Yeah, so looks like pike. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, if you click on, I've sent you the website. So if you want, you can you can click on these for the recipes. So let's just look at what is. I mean, so each uh -huh. one is a recipe. What is lobster curry? Oh, that sounds good to me. Lobster curry. Lobster curry was the for the other. Yeah, lobster curry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here. Oh. Uh, braised lobster in spices, which resulted in delicious curry. Mm. Uh, earlier writers specified tamarind juice. More recently, oh, yes, tamarind. Or by lemon juice. For a simpler recipe, use lobster tails instead of lobster. Oof. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh wow. Delicious. Ground cumin, uh, cumin, coriander, turmeric, cardamom. Cinnamon, ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Garlic, onions. That looks awesome. Black pepper, plain yogurt. That's very Indian. Very Indian. Mm -hmm. Like Indian. They talk about Malay, but it's... Well, I guess there's a lot of Indians in Malaysia, too. There's uh, South, uh, South Indians in Malaysia. So they speak a lot of Tamil. Language. So, um... Uh, we learned a lot about African food. I didn't know anything about African food until today, so I got, I learned a lot. How about you? No, it was very new, uh, very new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, uh, mm -hmm. um, what do you think, if you could pick one of those, uh, we learned a lot of new terms, uh, if you could pick one of those uh, uh, dishes, which one would you want to try? Mm. This kind of jerky. <laughs> jerky? Yeah, just just grab it and eat it. Easy, simple. Dried beef, dried dried meat. Yeah, not koro though. The lobster curry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love curry and I love lobster. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How about you, Servet? Anything look specifically, uh, especially good to you? And the first few ones look like sausages, pretty much the same idea. Uh, mm. What we have across the world. And mm. the one uh, with bread, you know, with. Mm -hmm. the bunny, uh, uh, bunny food? Or? Uh, bunny chow, bunny chow, yeah. Yeah, bunny chow is also familiar. I see it here on TV, I guess. Really? You've seen that before? Yes, I think. I've never seen anything they make like it that. Similar <laughs> food. I would like to maybe taste what they. Uh, invented 
for ketchup, this sort of ketchup. Oh yeah, the uh, that sauce that they're talking about, like a yeah. Uh, I forgot the name. Oh, it's that chutney. That chutney. Yeah. Yeah. That might be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, different sauces. Because I don't really uh, like ketchup. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Different I don't, sauces. Uh, yeah. Me too. I, I love condiments. Condiments. That's a good word. Condiments. Condiments are like the different sauces and things you put, like mustard and ketchup. Yes. Or anything like that. Uh, Horseradish, uh, relish, you know, those are condiments. Mayonnaise, condiment. So, um, yeah, ketchup, I don't use it very much, but it's my least favorite condiment. Maybe this uh, chutney would be good. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Susu. <laughs> Hi. What are you doing? <laughs> Just sneaking. Uh, Don't just bother sleeping, me. Sleeping in my class? <laughs> no. You're in trouble. <laughs> Don't bother me. Why are you in here to sleep? Uh, people come to my class to take a nap. That's fine. <laughs> you can do that. Interesting way to spend your online time. Uh, and uh, Wafa, um, was there any one of those uh, recipes that looked good to you that you would like to try? Um, yeah. Um, all of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, a, 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 it's similar to um, all of the, It's just the different way of uh, looking for the gradient. Similar to what? Um, our food. To your food, you said? Yeah. Or do you mean Saudi food or Mauritanian food? Uh, Mauritanian and really? Saudi. So between oh. two. Oh. Mm -hmm. But except the bunny chow that they <laughs> put in the bread, we have something similar to it inside the bread. That's a good idea. Mm. Interesting. Lots of people have good ideas. It's funny when you see... Um, Sometimes different cultures will have, will come up with the same idea independently. Well, they'd be like, they had the same idea, and they didn't even know about this other people that had the same idea. And they they come up with the idea independently. Like people just have the same ideas sometimes, and sometimes it's influenced. Sometimes they they heard about it, uh, as they said, because who uh, who are some of the people that have traveled to South Africa in the history in South African history? How who are some of the people that have occupied it or have lived there? Or what kind of influences do they have? By what cultures? Besides South Africa, what other countries uh, have come in contact? French. The French. Did they say French? <laughs> I don't remember. They, they, did, they, they, said they listed a lot of European countries. I don't know if French was one of them. Uh, Dutch. Yeah, Dutch. Dutch, for sure. They were occupied by the Dutch. Um, Portuguese, they said Portugal. They said Germany. Maybe French. I don't know about French. British. Lots of different European countries. And then also Indians from India. Uh, Malay uh, did they say Malaysian? Did they say Malaysian? I can't remember anymore. <laughs> a lot of people. So that's why the... Uh, that's why they have such a diverse cuisine. They're such an interesting, unique cuisine. Lots of different combinations. So, might be good. So, click on that and uh, pick a uh, pick a recipe and and try to make us some South Africa South African food. Great. So we are done with our uh, advanced food class. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me. I have two more classes today, okay. which will be the next one. I'm really excited about. It's my most. Ex I'm very excited about this next class. Mm -hmm. About, about? Uh, the language and culture of the Pirahan, and the Pirahan are uh, people 
a tribe in the Amazon with a very, very, very strange and u unique language. Ooh, I've talked about their language is very interesting, especially for me because um, it's one of the languages that you can sing or whistle oh. <laughs> um, or speak. And that you can it's you can you can speak the language many different ways and it means the same thing. So it's very interesting. Anyway, I'm very excited about that class. It's in one hour. So um thanks everyone again. Great discussion, good job today, and um and have a good nap, Susu. I'll uh I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> 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 Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Great time. It's a fun time.